It's not just a cliche. June really is the most popular month for weddings. And as all those June brides make their way down the aisle dressed in white, millions of people are waiting on a decision from the men and women in black, the Supreme Court justices who could open up the institution of marriage to all Americans. The case is called Obergefell v. Hodges, and it could make gay marriage the law of the land. But to understand just what's at stake and why, you need to know a little about the brief but embattled history of the same-sex marriage movement. It began in earnest in the early 80s, fueled in part by the lack of legal rights that became apparent during the AIDS crisis and gained steam throughout the 90s. But in 1996, a setback when President Bill Clinton signed the Defense of Marriage Act, or DOMA, which declared marriage to be between a man and a woman, which meant no joint filing of tax returns and no collection of your same-sex partner's social security benefits, for starters, things got a little more complicated as individual states started to say yes to gay weddings and more gay Americans started walking down the aisle. As of today, 37 states and the District of Columbia allow gay marriage, and 60% of Americans approve of it, a lightning-fast change in public opinion. The change in people's attitudes has been enormous. In 2013, Edie Windsor won a historic victory in a Supreme Court case that overturned DOMA, meaning if you're a gay couple who gets married in a state that allows you to, you're entitled to all the rights the federal government grants straight couples. So why wasn't that the end of the road? Well, there were still states that banned gay marriage. And in November 2014, the Sixth Circuit Court upheld the right of Michigan, Ohio, Tennessee, and Kentucky to do so. Meanwhile, other states had their bans struck down by other courts. So now the Supreme Court is stepping in to settle things once and for all. And whatever they say goes. Enter Jim Obergefell. He and his partner, John, were married in Maryland, but they lived in Ohio, where gay marriage isn't legal. Like Brown and Brown versus the Board of Education, Obergefell is the so-called named plaintiff, representing a number of other couples. The case asks whether states that refuse to recognize gay marriage are violating same-sex couples' 14th Amendment right to equal protection under the law. The Supreme Court will likely answer two critical questions. First, is it legal to ban gay marriage at all? And second, should a state that doesn't allow gay marriage still be required to recognize a marriage that took place in another state? So how will it all shake out in SCOTUS? If the DOMA case is any indication, here's where they all might be leaning. And many believe Kennedy will be the swing vote. Activists on both sides of the debate are waiting for the ruling on one of the biggest civil rights cases in recent history. So whether this will be the summer of love for same-sex couples or leave millions singing the wedding bell blues, when it comes to the gay marriage decision, at least you can say, now I get it.